Hey guys, it's Jesse with CAD Dimensions. It has been forever since I've been able to post a video. If you're wondering why I look stranger than I normally do, it's not because I've grown pixelated in my old age since you've last seen me. And no, I'm not in witness protection or being censored by the government. No, today we are answering the question that I've been asked many times. How do we solve the problem of blurry, pixelated, and misshapen images? Enhance. Enhance. Well, since that doesn't work in real life, let's consider this scenario. We've all had it happen. You want to use an image for a presentation or a report, and it looks awesome until you realize that it's the wrong size, shape, or resolution to work. Maybe it looks great when it's tiny, but as soon as you make it the size you need, boom. First class ticket to Blairsville. Well, stick around, because today we'll be setting all those pesky little numbers that make sure every image you create in SOLIDWORKS Visualizer Composer comes out perfect for whatever you need it for. So why is it so difficult to get an image to do what we need it to do? Well, the short story is that most of the images we use are something of a compromise. Without going into the long-winded explanation that I was going to put here, there are basically two kinds of graphics. Vector files, which store shapes, and raster files, which break shapes down into tiny little dots. In that description, a vector sounds like the perfect file type. Just like using a sketch block in SOLIDWORKS, if you can store the shape, you can make that shape any size you need. But the reality of storing shapes that blend together and make realistic looking images, however, will make you want to cry. Google photorealistic vectors and you'll see what I mean. So as a society, we've compromised on graphics and used this less than ideal method for approximating shapes in order to create a great looking result with these. A raster file is probably what you've been used to using all along, even if you didn't know it by name. The most common raster formats are probably JPEG, PNG, TIFF, or bitmap. And I'm sure you're probably familiar with a few of these. The Achilles heel of this format, however, is that once a file is saved with a certain number of dots, that's it. That means that we're not able to enlarge over 100% without losing quality. Let's head to the drawing board and see if we can simplify this. There are four factors we need to understand to get the quality right the first time. Resolution, physical size, aspect ratio, and pixel size. In reality, quality just boils down to keeping track of density or resolution. So resolution can be thought of as the density of the dots. Usually this value is listed in dots per inch or DPI. Technically, pixels per inch and dots per inch can be two different things, but I don't think it's helpful to this conversation to make that distinction here. The more dots per inch we have, the higher resolution the image is. You can see how more, smaller dots would be able to capture more detail. What makes this value confusing is that it's often used somewhat recklessly to describe image quality. You may hear someone say, I just need a high res image or just use a high megapixel camera. But resolution is really only one piece to the puzzle. The real question is at what size does it need to be high resolution? I think the most valuable way to think of resolution is how quickly am I eating up the available pixels? More on that in a moment. Physical size is exactly what it sounds like. This would be the real life size of the image if you needed to print it. This value would be measured in inches, that is, if you measure with those kooky things in your part of the world. Now we've already established a link between these two variables as our DPI is dots per inch and our physical size is in inches. Let's move on to the aspect ratio. The aspect ratio is the next variable and it's basically just a way to explain the shape of the image without implying any physical size or resolution. Since images may need to come in all shapes and sizes, simply saying square or rectangle won't cut it. So the aspect ratio is just the ratio of the height and the width. This seems pretty straightforward, but we as humans just love to mix and match units just to make sure that no one ever knows what anyone else is talking about. So you may see numbers like 4x6, 5x7, 8x10, which used to be popular print sizes. While these are technically physical dimensions measured in inches, people got so familiar with their shape that they are sometimes used in place of an aspect ratio. As things have progressed from film into digital, we have more true aspect ratios. A number such as 16 by 9 is not typically a reference to any physical size, but a unitless reference to shape alone. It's a scalable ratio. For example, media formats such as the one that you're watching right now, maybe 480, 720, 1080, 4K, they're all the same aspect ratio, just different resolutions or more or less dots. Common values are often displayed in their lowest whole number form since it's cleaner to say 16 by 9 rather than 1.777 to 1. Alright, so here it comes together. Pixel size is what actually sets your output and will combine the other two settings. This setting is simply the total number of pixels or dots you'll be saving in width and height. Remember, in a raster image, the number of dots we save will remain constant. That's the actual data that the file has. That means that once we save the image, the physical size and resolution have an inverse relationship. If we need a larger image, the effective resolution of that image goes down. If we need a smaller image, the effective resolution goes up, right? 
So what does this mean for us when we're saving an image? Well, here's my rule of thumb. Save your image at the largest physical size you think you might need at a resolution of 300 DPI. High quality prints are generally done at 300 to 400 DPI, so that means to get good quality, you'll be using up your available pixels at a rate of 300 dots per every inch of physical print or display size. For easy math, let's say we want a square image or an aspect ratio of one to one, and we know the largest we might need the image to be is 10 inches by 10 inches. We'll take 300 dots per inch and multiply that by the 10 inches, and that gives us 3,000 dots by 3,000 dots. So we know that if we save an image out at 3,000 by 3,000 pixels, we'll have an image that can be used at high quality at 10 inches or smaller. If we need it larger than 10 inches after that, the resolution will simply start dropping from 300. If at that point we decide we need the image to be 20 by 20, we have the option of using our existing image, which will now be at a resolution of 150 DPI, or saving out a 6,000 by 6,000 pixel image to maintain 300 DPI at full size. So where might we find these settings in the wild? Well, that's a good question. There's a variety of places you might see these settings, but let's check out three applications. In SOLIDWORKS Composer, you'll find that the views will work off of the document paper space. You'll see that the format sets the shape and the size. Whether we use that physical size when we save the image is actually up to us. You'll see that in the high resolution workshop, our image is already restrained in its aspect ratio, so we can set pixel size and physical size and let that drive the resolution. We can set the pixel size and the resolution and let that drive the physical size. Or we can use the physical size from the paper space and just set the size which determines the resolution. If you save an image directly out of SOLIDWORKS using Save As, it will save the whole graphics area. Check the description for a tech tip with a trick on that. But if you do use the options, you can set the resolution and the physical size. You'll just have to crop the image down to obtain the size and aspect ratio you desire. If you're saving out using PhotoView 360, I recommend using a camera. This will allow you to set the framing and the aspect ratio within the camera. And then you can select graphics area and choose pixel size. You'll note that having the aspect ratio locked will restrain the pixel size, so you only have to enter the height or the width and it will calculate the other. This process is exactly the same in Visualize as well. I use the camera to drive the aspect ratio. This way I know the final image will be framed the way I want it. Once in the output settings, you'll see size and resolution settings. Remember here that pixel size is the critical one. You can set the resolution as high as you want, but if you only have a handful of pixels to work with, you won't be able to use it for much. I do set the resolution to my desired value here because if you look underneath, it gives us a nice little readout that confirms the math that we just did. Here you can see that a 16 by nine image at 3000 pixels will give us a 10 inch wide image at full quality that will be 5.63 inches tall. So now when you're in the mood to model everything, you'll know how to get a great looking image of it to send to me. Well, I hope you guys found this information helpful and hope to see you back next time. I'm hoping to get back on track and getting more videos out. I just got on Twitter. I know probably it's just in time for Twitter to disappear in favor for the next platform. But if you want to follow me on there, I'm trying to put more updates. I'll put a link to it in the description. We'll see you next time.